wait for some people to join the video. Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to another session of Dog Spot Live with a very special guest today. Uh, she is an international uh, all breed XCI judge. Uh, she's had animals all her life and uh, not limited to regular cats and dogs like us. She's also kept a variety of animals that we'll talk to her about while growing up. And also, she's very special to me. She's a mother in law. Hi, Mom. Hi, Ms. Adar. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? All well. Okay. So today we're going to talk about uh, two of your uh, favorite breeds. Uh, I would say they're in top three, top five. Yeah. yeah. So Goldens versus Labrador Retrievers. Uh, they're both Retrievers. Uh, they're very highly popular dogs. Uh, and uh, uh, Mom, you've kept both of these breeds uh, since forever. So you want to tell us about them? Yeah. Well, Golden Retrievers and Labradors have been with me um, right from when I was, uh, you know, younger than my teens. And I've had some of the, and I've also been working both Goldens. I've used them for hunting. I've used them for flushing. I've used them for retrieving Goldens, Labradors, as well as um, your uh, Cocker Spaniel, as well as your um, Pointer. So I've worked with them all well and uh, all of them and trained them and uh, had some fun times with uh, labs and goldens wow so you even went hunting uh, with labs that that's what they were bred for See, right? when, when we were younger we used to we there was hunting allowed and we used to do a lot of uh, duck shoots uh, in um, all over the place we used to and wow. we used to always have two dogs and my my work was to keep uh, was to handle both the dogs and i have trained them and uh, so usually i always had a golden retriever and a labrador i also had for many years a uh, english pointer which was beautiful he really worked but he came to me full grown so he was already trained when he came to me and then i had a cocker spaniel which also was a working cocker spaniel so i've I've uh, I've worked with them and what they're actually supposed to do, which is happens very rarely now. So most you, you, you can't work with them anymore. There's no hunting allowed, which is perfectly all right. But uh, we used to go to the Okla. Um, there used to be a barrage Okla where there used to be in winter. So it used to be freezing freezing cold and my dogs used to um, immediately get into the water and um, my dad my brothers friends uh, we used to be every saturday sunday hunting that's amazing we have a very special uh, person here saying hello to you name is mukul red hi da hi da a okay. lot of your friends are here, Jagdeep, Kennel, uh, Rosalind. Yeah, Francis, yeah, Francis, Karan, yeah, oh. yeah. Hi, Rana. Yeah, yes, so yeah. Good and, thanks, uh, thanks, Francis, for getting on. We're going to have a family affair. We have a comment from your son now. Karan is saying Golden versus Labrador, easy answer, German Shepherd. Uh, well, you know what? I would actually tend to uh, agree with him. German Shepherd is my favorite breed. What can oh. I say? <laughs> yeah, and I've worked with German Shepherds as well. So, wow. yeah. yeah. So, so, what they meant for? yeah what they've meant for so we work i work for job with german shepherds so it's um the best part is that uh that's the you know there are true companion dogs so let me start a little bit about the history which has been many times you know explained but a little bit of history and first of all um uh, the uh, golden retrievers and the labradors in FCI, they come into the group eight, which is the flushing and the re retrieving dog. Also in the US, they call the sporting dog. And in uh, England and UK, they are called gun dogs. They're basically, this, uh, they use, they are highly, highly skilled 
hunting dogs. That's what they have been bred for. None of them are the original dogs. They, uh, the uh, Labrador Retriever was actually, it, it came, um, he was originated from Canada, Newfoundland. Okay. And um, there was a dog called the St. John's Water Dog, which is now instinct. And through that, those lines, yes, though the dog were, that dog was used for, um, by fishermen. And these dogs were uh, trained to jump into icy cold water and retrieve their fishing nets. Oh. Uh, or, yes, drag their nets across and also to haul their local gear. And they were also very good companion dogs. They used to stay on the ship while, you know, what the fishing uh, trolleys or whatever you have. And then they would go home with the fishermen. Okay. And uh, so they were uh, highly skilled. Now, uh, they were called St. John's Water Dog. Um, in the 1800s, um, uh, uh, people from England and U US, they took these dogs back with them. And um, because they wanted um, water dogs for, okay. again, retrieving retrieving and um, flushing. So they um, basically these uh, the Labrador, I'm talking about the Labrador, they were uh, taken to England and to um, the US. And for some reason, Canada then banned the St. John's water dogs. So yes, so basically they became instinct. So your Labradors were taken back, mixed with a few other dogs like the Portuguese water dog, the Irish water dog, and they were in, made very popular. They became very popular and as your uh, 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 skilled sporting dog. Okay. Yeah. And um, they also, the dog was basically, um, used for hunting because the english love their hunts yeah you know, they used to love hunting so they were uh, used for hunting and um they were highly highly trainable same time all the way in in scotland there was a golden retriever wasn't a golden retriever basically there was a uh the original uh original person which goes down he was uh, called Baron uh, Tweedmouth. He was a avid hunter, and okay. he had he had dogs like a flat coated golden retrievers. He had the the uh, Tweed Water Spaniel, and he uh, now he wanted basically he was looking for a, a very highly skilled retriever, uh, which would which would retrieve in the water as well as on land. So he basically um, used both these dogs, the flat-coated golden and the, uh, the um, to, uh, tweed water uh, dog. And he got four puppies, which are, were the forefathers of our golden retriever today. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And basically, he was the person who uh, brought golden retriever uh originally uh, had golden retrievers and he was from scotland so this is just a small little um yeah, i heard thing. about like three or four new bees that i've never heard about before and like you said some of them are cute as well but, unfortunately uh, unfortunately even the tweed water span uh uh water spaniel that's also extinct today yeah i've so never today. heard of it before so it's not there today yeah uh, so while we are in history, because I told everyone you had two different animals also, so we're going to talk about your history also. So how come you had all these uh, the animals that you're going to list and just worry about them? How did you come into uh, raising them? Oh, my pet. Okay, so th th that's thanks to my parents. They exposed me to a lot of dogs. Uh, I mean, animals. Uh, they were um, they used to uh, they were wildlife convert. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, they, we were basically we were brought up in the jungle and uh, we did a 
those days there was hunting we did hunting we used to spend a lot of our childhood i spent a lot of my childhood in the jungles um uh, basically every saturday sunday we used to go to jungles we used to yeah and then um my parents uh, were very good friends with um, uh, a person and uh, uh, mr nd bachkethi who was the first director of the delhi zoo okay. and he started the he so my parents were associated with the delhi zoo when they started i'm basically talking about uh, 60 years and so what happened was that um they didn't have the facility at that time there were at that time there was a lot of poaching and there was a lot of uh, not poaching there was a lot uh, lo a lot of orphans which they found in uh, leopards and tigers deer elephants otters and so those the babies used to come to the zoo okay and and, and um, there was not uh, you know there weren't um, skilled people to look after these babies so basically all these uh, animals used to land up in our house and they used to be looked after like our dogs we always had about five or six dogs in our house we had cats we had dogs we had birds we had everything we had even a goat and a sheep and we had everything so these uh, babies were raised in our bedrooms wow. with us uh, as part of our uh, household so we've had tiger cubs we've had leopard cubs we've had deer and at my i mean i even remember taking my leopard to school with me <laughs> grown up I'm talking about a grown up and i still remember we had we had a harness for her her name was bina and she went to school with me and she spent the whole day at show and tell and because she was just like my cat at home so she went with me once a year on show and tell and then uh, we also i had a tiger who used to go with a, just a leash out walking wow. one day a really interesting story uh, yeah. i'll make it very short uh, one day uh, uh, the our gate was left open and our tiger had disappeared we didn't know what happened to him and then yeah and then just right next uh, right uh, about 100 yards from from our house was uh, a crossroad and uh, we found him standing there and there was like all the uh, like all the cars had stopped people were you know just in shock and there was this full grown tiger standing in the middle of the road it wow. happened yeah it happened that the servant who used to come to feed him uh he used to bring meat you know fresh meat every day from nizamuddin so yeah. he was coming back with his load of meat so he just said come on jim let's go back home and they both happily walked back <laughs> home <laughs> so that was how it was that's how we that's how our uh, our uh, you know wildlife was all over in our house yeah wow that's amazing that's a great story so thank you for sharing that with us so i'll go back to <laughs> let's go back and do what we have to do yeah. yeah so okay let's talk about some similarities between a labrador and a golden retriever okay so both dogs both dogs bred by completely different um, they have different genes they have different uh, bloodlines in them but bred for the same purpose and that again as i i want to tell you they they have been bred to be highly skilled hunting dogs with a very soft mouth it's very important for a labrador or golden retriever to have a very soft mouth soft mouth means that they have to after a hunter shoots they have to find they have to uh, uh, smell and find the bird usually water fowl and um uh, retrieve it and come back sometimes you know uh, 500 yards or whatever it is and there should never be a even a tooth mark on that bird okay. because if there is then that bird is considered you know um not edible Okay. So, wow. so they've been bred specially to be very soft mouth. Means yeah. they can carry anything, you know, like 
like I think someone did, I mean, uh, Sharad mentioned that they can carry an egg in their mouth without without uh, breaking the egg. There so, was a challenge going on where people were filming their dogs carrying uh, eggs in their mouth and not breaking it. And most of them were golden or lambs. Well, they've been bred for that, especially. They've okay. been bred for that. Let them, they have to have a very soft mouth. But also they have to be very intelligent, very highly trainable. So, so all the genetics were put into place and we had the Labrador and the Golden Retriever. Wow. So what are the, like, I mean, people, a lot of people uh, sort of confuse the puppies as well. Uh, when they're tinier, what is, what do you think, are they very similar as puppies? Oh, not to me, no. Uh, to maybe to a layman because they, uh, if you, yeah, a golden retriever might because they have, you know, uh, the structure as puppies are all the same. But no, a golden retriever goes on to get a lot much more hair, and you know, yeah, and the head heads are different, and their body is different. So uh, no, they're not the same as puppies you can tell what is a golden retriever and what is a labrador for sure so mainly the hair so if puppy if somebody is telling me oh no by the somebody's trying to pass off a lack of hair, i should look for the hair um no you basically um they have a different face so yeah okay. they have a different they do have a different face. So there is a, a lot of difference between a golden retriever and a Labrador as well, as far as the structure is concerned. OK. So we have a uh, comment from uh, Shah Ankil. He's saying, Anjali, do you remember when my pineapple Lori flew away and the golden Lori in the kennel had just got it in his mouth? No, that he went in the aviary without a scratch. Absolutely. That was just, and that was fabulous that his lorry just flew away and his golden actually caught it. And oh. there was not a tooth. That's exactly, that's what they've been bred for. Not a, a, live. And a live bird. No, they're not supposed to kill your bird. They're not okay. supposed to kill the bird. So even if there is a um, wounded bird or whatever, they're supposed to bring that bird back to you without biting it. And yes, Sharad is absolutely correct. We were there and that's what happened. And that and he caught he caught the, uh, his uh, parrot and we brought him back and put him in the cage. Yeah. <laughs> Mira is saying nowadays when they hold, I mean, I think she's talking about eggs. Nowadays when they hold eggs, it disappears. <laughs> what disappears? Eggs. <laughs> 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 yes, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, because you see, uh, they haven't been really um, for many years now, I think for probably 30, 40 years, they haven't been uh, being used for what they have been bred for. So basically, the inst instinct is also dying. Okay. Oh, so yeah. what do you uh, feel are the differences between a lab and a golden uh, retriever? Well, there's a lot of difference. The differences in the breeding, the differences in appearance, the differences in a, a lot of the character also. There's a lot of difference. And of course, you know, the whole the whole structure of the dog is a different dog. And they have different genetics. So they're, they're two absolutely different dogs, but bred for doing the same purpose. And they also make a lot of, uh, they are fa make beautiful family pets. So what, what happened was in England, so I wanted to continue. So in Scotland, so this uh, Baron uh, Tweetmark, he, he loved his hunting. He, yeah. he, so he created this golden retriever because after a full day of hunt, they also wanted a beautiful, soft, intelligent, lovely companion to come back and sit with them yeah. while while you know their uh, the family is you know in the evenings so the golden retriever came into our, the homes and you know would sit by the fire and enjoy the the whole family experience very gentle very gentle dogs so ashish wants to know the difference between english and american golden retrievers 
Ashish, this was already done, you know, in with uh, with uh, previously. There's a there's a difference in the head. There's a difference in that coat. The English, okay. So I just do a general small thing about for Ashish. Ashish, the difference in the English coat is that they're slightly slightly wavier, and they basically uh, are uh, a very uh, light cream colored. Uh, the uh, the um, their body is slightly longer and they are slightly heavier and uh, than the American dog. Now the American dogs have almost a rich gold to uh, richer gold color. Yeah, their coat, yeah, their coat is also um, very um, silky and longer. And also, they are slightly more um, athletic, slightly more muscular, and also they are uh, they slightly more boisterous. I'd like to say a little bit more boisterous and a little bit more um, 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 uh, not as calm. An English an English uh, lab, uh, uh, would be slightly um, calmer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, thanks for answering that. Uh, I'll take another question from uh, Mr. Mithun, who's our regular, He's asking which are the other breeds bred for similar purpose as retrievers? Uh, you have your you have your uh, spaniels. All your there's a whole lot of spaniels, okay. and um, uh, and your golden and your labradors, basically. Yeah. Okay. Because the pointers the pointers are doing something totally different. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, uh, one more question and then we carry on with our discussion. Uh, Sagar is asking, which breed is brilliant lab or golden retriever, which is... So, we'll not answer the first question, Sagar, because the whole topic is that, but which is more companion, which is a better companion to us? Sagar, uh, both, are, both are bred to be companion dogs. So, I would say, why don't we vote at the end? I would, I would love all the viewers to put their vote in. Uh, whether they love goldens or what do they prefer? We and we'll talk about it till the end. <laughs> no, you should give your vote right now so we know which is the better dog. My vote, no. You'll have to wait till the end. <laughs> uh, Mira, hi Mira. Uh, she wants to know: Can you tell us if there is a separate breed called white retriever? People often get confused. With that color. White retriever, no. There's no, uh, there's not a, a separate breed called white retriever. The golden retriever in the in England has become. It's a very pale, very pale light color, which almost borders to a white. Now, in the last, I think in the last twenty years, we are seeing them getting lighter and lighter, uh, but they're basically not white. Okay. But they're they're a very mild, very very light colored golden. So in England you get so now golden retriever the colors. So you get them from a very light pale golden to a very dark golden. So you, all the colors in between you get you get uh, they're acceptable. Okay, so I Mia, yeah, I hope that answers your uh, question. Uh, Minty, you have a very good point. We are going to talk about it. So I'm going to wait uh, till we get to that point in our conversation and then put up your uh, uh, comment then. So, uh, Mom, what are the other differences uh, between the breeds? Because uh, both are considered, I guess, very good family pets and people just say lab or golden in the same breath. But now, today, I learned that they're completely uh, uh, bred in different areas and you know, were used for a little bit of a different purpose initially but now it's become similar so what is uh, what other differences do you feel uh well as far as um the personality goes the personalities are almost the same mm -hmm. uh basically they they they've been bred for the same purpose and they have a lot of similarities more similarities but as far as genetics are concerned they're totally different okay uh, compare and uh, as appearances, they are totally different. Coat, they are totally different. 
uh, grooming, they're totally different. But okay. as far as your personality is concerned, as far as the, uh, you know, the, um, the, the, the reason they've been bred for in, in the world, that, that remains the same. And, uh, but basically everything else is different. Like your, your um, structure is different. Yeah, so, and genetics is different, yeah. So for grooming, uh, would you say they require the say, similar grooming or they easy to groom? I mean, I, I know golden hair dog. Yeah, it's very obvious. Like the Labrador is a very easy dog, they, you know, like uh, to, to, uh, to groom. They, the Labrador comes in three different colors. One is the okay. yellow, one is a black, and one is a chocolate. So can we see the black? That you have. <laughs> you want to see the black? Let yes. me see if I can get him. Come here, baby. Come on. This is my guy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now he doesn't want to come up. Okay. So, I are you? Yeah. That, that's. <laughs> He's pushed my chair away. Okay. You might have to call him. So yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, look Good. at that. Good boy. Yeah, that's this is my cactus. If little bit you can see about see him now. <laughs> yeah, I got him in the room and now he's bored because he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Francis has put a vote for cactus. <laughs> ah, thanks, Francis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay, so that he's my dad. <laughs> So so now, um, what what uh, what? Where were we? Where were we? We were talking about the colors that labs come in. Okay, so yeah, so the labs labs come in three colors, and um, <clears throat> the goldens in variations of cream to gold, right? And all are accepted from the you know lightest to the darkest of gold. All okay. colors are accepted. Yeah. Okay, so we were talking about the grooming. So you know your lab, your lab, they have a very uh, their coat is a very sleek, easy care coat. Uh, they do have uh, a double coat. The top coat is a short, thick, straight top coat, short, and yeah. but they have a soft, um, weather resistant undercoat. Oh, uh, yeah. They have a double coat. Both the dogs have a double coat. Okay. Because because of the swimming, they need to they need that undercoat. So that the cold doesn't get doesn't affect them. So that okay. undercoat is very important for a lab. Very important for a lab. Uh, as far as your golden is concerned, it has a very you know uh, dense water resistant outer coat, and a thick thick Come undercoat. So um, a lab, a golden retriever will definitely want to need more um, uh, grooming every day. He needs uh, basically um, uh, he will um, uh, shed a lot. Both shed the uh, the Labrador also sheds and the golden retriever sheds. Golden retriever needs to. Uh, at home, you need to at least groom, groom, groom him every single day. If you don't groom him every day, he's going to get knots. He's going to have skin problems. Uh, so he does require extra grooming. Once a month bath is perfectly all right. Uh, basically, for a golden retriever, you you require a undercoat rake so that it takes off. You know, in the hot weather, you can take off all the undercoat. But the outer coat still remains. The beauty, his beauty, still remains. Right. And um, um, the Labrador, like my Labrador, seems to be shedding all year round. All year round. I find, <laughs> I find there's. I have my goldens, and I. They used to have seasonal shedding, but my Labrador seems to be, and he's got a beautiful, thick, shiny coat. But he seems to be always, there's always black hair on the ground. So he seems to be shedding all the time. 
so yeah but what do you uh, say to people who say oh it's summer it's hot uh, golden has so many hair we should shave it off not at all not at not at all musarab uh, you never shave a dog's hair unless he has some sort of a fungal infection or he has any other skin problem you never shave a dog's hair off the moment you shave the dog's hair his skin is being exposed to that heat and that hot sun and he's going to get much worse he they have only their nose and the, you know the this face where they can uh, they uh, perspire through and you're going to expose him it's like someone who's um, bald and goes out and shaves his entire hair and goes out in the hot sun he's going to get skin he's going to get burned so uh, never never shave your dog please never shave unless he has a particular uh, coat condition and only only shave that area you don't have to shave the entire dog with a wet yeah this is yeah. but this is a very um, common procedure in india summer yeah. starts uh, setting in and people start shaving off the other uh, dog's hair and you see you see uh, i have there's a golden retriever who lives close to us and he's turned into a poodle they've left you know they've taken out his all his coat and they've left a tuft on his head and they've left a tuft on his tail and he's now become a, a poodle and the poor guy is embarrassed and plus he's exposed to the hot sun so you no know, that, no that's just not it not done not done no thank you thank you for enlightening us on that uh sharan gill is also saying not cactus and the fighters <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to take some questions we have a lot of comments uh, so when i saying which month can we start homemade food for golden retriever puppy uh, uh if you planning to give um home homemade food first of all you have to check that that food is um got all the nutrition in it uh which the puppy requires because he is going to see a uh, golden retrievers and labradors they are a medium to large size breed and they grow all the way till about 3 years of age they keep wow. growing they keep growing and uh, basically a, a labrador and a golden retriever mature at about 2 and a half to 3 years old it's a complete different dog uh at one and a half years where you think he's a mature dog he's totally a teenager at that time so he needs a lot of uh, his uh, proteins calcium everything required to um for his bones his coat eyes everything to uh, grow so uh yes you can give home food but you have to understand that uh, you have to ask the vet if it is um uh you know it has its um, required um, nutrition so you can start uh, i guess you can start homemade food anytime you want as soon as you wean the puppy you can start from that time uh so now we've posted a link below for you uh, about dog nutrition you can watch that video and uh, as bon said also please consult a vet before uh, changing the diet uh, just to make sure that the puppy is getting all the nutrition uh Ajay uh, is saying now that we are co-inhabiting with the dogs in a highly urbanized city, is it not pertinent to also understand the dogs and their behavior and the evolution in the urban context? Yes, I agree. I agree, yeah. Ajay. Absolutely. Uh, yes, you have to understand uh, as far as what breed you are uh, or you are talking about. Uh, the reason they were bred. The reason uh, 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 and how. the way you are going to keep them um now uh, as far as your um, uh, retrieving dogs you've got they are very very uh, energetic you have to understand that the labrador and the golden retriever are very energetic dogs they've been bred for a particular reason they've been bred to work all day they've been bred to work 6 to 8 hours and so for for that reason alone you have to um uh understand that the behavior so when you are going to commit to uh bring a dog into your home uh, yes it's very important for you to understand that um that there are certain commitments from your part also that you have to do that is exercise your dogs because basically um a bored dog 
which is a golden retriever and lab if you're not going to exercise them enough they're going to be unhappy dogs so the if you are they are evolving to urbanization but they still have their instincts which are there which we have to also take care of yes i think that was a very good question and uh, great yeah. answer to that um just going to say or rana wants to know why are labrador and golden uh known to be the best guide okay so golden retrievers and labradors rana are basically as you know all over the world they are the most popular service guide dogs available yeah. and this is because they are very highly trainable uh oh. since since they have been bred uh for to be trained to uh, um listen to their master they are very highly highly trainable also at the same time they are very gentle dogs they're very obedient dogs they're very intelligent dogs um i was reading somewhere and, and i think it's uh, true that um labradors are i think the third most intelligent dog in the world and the golden retriever is the sixth most intelligent dog in the world so sorry. yeah yeah so sorry so i said so the labs won the poll no 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 <laughs> no 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 it's nothing like that just because it that, that's one that's one intelligence is different obedience gentleness all that also comes into the whole thing <laughs> so yes so because they are so intelligent they they are being used uh for um uh guide and service dogs and they remain they remain um very um uh, a very important part and and these two dogs uh hands over win all over the world as um i see um deaf uh guide dogs service dogs that's and that's why they use the german shepherds and you use your other dogs as police dogs as other dogs but uh, labradors golden retrievers remain the most popular they are using many more breeds but they remain the most popular breeds because of their gentleness because of their intelligence and because of their obedience right Uh, we have a very long comment, uh, but I'm gonna take it up from Vipul. He's saying, "Hi, Anjali, man. Uh, to what extent a white patch on chest is acceptable on a black lab uh, related to genetics? What's the understanding for a layman to understand a black lab mating with a yellow offspring? Number of black and yellow. I mean, how can one predict the litter will have more of black or yellow lags? Always, you're in Sharad Sir's fan. Thanks, Vipul. Thanks, Vipul. Okay. uh as far as the white patch on the chest is concerned it can be a very 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 tiny uh white patch um i think not more than an inch or two that's the only thing acceptable and that basically in you know you tend to kind of color it in in a in a dog show if he that's what you're talking about uh related to genetics was the understanding for a layman to understand black labrador okay so black labradors and yellows of course and chocolates they're all mated together but uh let me tell you uh um, black dogs have a uh, certain black genetics a uh, black dogs have the genetics to only give black puppies so these are these are all coming down with certain uh genetics and all um i we used to have a dog but you could mate it with chocolate you could mate it with yellow but he would only give black puppies but that's not true for all black dogs but um yes black is a dominant gene okay. color so we have a question on grooming he's uh, ayad mohammed is saying my one year golden uh, retriever having problem that lot of his hair is falling lately so please tell how to fix this issue okay so uh you have to understand um this is a uh, this is the season where your golden retrievers will shed a lot the best thing would do uh, you should get all the undercoat out which i told you that the coat rake so start using the undercoat rake the first time you use it you will be really shocked at how much hair would come out 
the undercoat comes out so um keep using this almost every day until you know his coat stops coming off now uh, this is uh, in india at least this is a time where all dogs are shedding even we are shedding our hair this is a uh, you know the summer time uh, golden retrievers do excessive shedding in the summer time they have that summer time shedding so uh, you you will have to check if the dog has some sort of a allergy uh, you will have to go to a vet for that um other than that uh, just see if his coat is uh, if his uh, skin is red please consult a vet i would just say that if he's just normal um, shedding and you feel it's a lot he's a golden retriever so you will think that's a lot a lot yeah. of uh, shedding but they do shed a lot some uh, sometimes um um uh, like i've had golden retrievers that almost become like labradors that's how much they shed in the summer and then they start getting that coat and they have beautiful long lustrous uh, coat in the winter and i've had golden retrievers also which uh, don't shed at all they wouldn't shed only their um inner coat they would shed but their outer coat would remain so they would not shed as much as uh, some of them so they're all you know they have difference so as long as the the skin is fine i don't think you should have a problem okay uh Mr. Mittal, for jaundice, please consult a vet. We can't answer that. Diesel, uh, hi, she's saying hello, lovely ladies. Uh, Omi auntie's here. Hey, Anju, it's uh, good to see you. Um, hi, Ami. <laughs> Chris Bond Kennels is saying uh, yes, ma'am. You orate so well. Yes, she does. Uh, is saying information. Uh, Okay, Naksh Anshul Singh is saying, I am interested in American standard. How can we improve? What is the main common thing American Labrador? Um, you have to study your bloodlines. You have to uh, uh, check what all is in the market. You have to go to dog shows. You have to see what is winning. You have to... Uh, um, uh, uh, made to the winning dogs. Uh, that's that's the way you kind of improve. Um, uh, you need to have a very good female if you want good dogs, good puppies. You want to improve your standard. Please make sure that your female, that your you, the female that you use, is a, a good female, um, and you use a good male. That's the way to go to dog shows. Check out your bloodlines. What all is available. And you and you would be able to improve definitely. There's a lot of dogs out there that you can use. Are they saying that just split the spill the beans that you have a soft corner for golden retrievers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ajay. Maybe, probably, probably. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, Okay, Ashish is asking what to see in golden pups while select, selecting from litter pickup. How to choose the best? Okay, okay, Ashish. Uh, Ashish, what you have to what you have to pick up is uh, first of all, it depends what age you're looking at. Uh, we never pick up our puppies at uh, anything less than two months. Uh, it's a myth that uh, you know you you can. Uh, we are breeders and we know immediately which puppy. Yes, instinctively we instinctively we do come to know which is uh, a better puppy. But before, if you want something for uh, uh, health wise. You have to just look at the puppy. If the puppy looks healthy to you, eyes have to be clear, nose has to be uh, wet and slightly cool. Uh, it needs to be, you know, um, the puppy needs to be uh, a happy puppy. You need to see uh, health in that puppy. It's not very difficult. Eyes have to be clear. There shouldn't be anything running in the eyes. The coat has to be clean. The puppy should be smelling good. It cannot be smelling of. There's no excuse in the world that the puppy has, you know, is smelling. Uh, he should be on all fours. He should be active. He should be coming to you. That's how you choose. If you want to choose, I don't know for sure. Then you'll have to wait at least two and a half to three months to choose something for sure. 
Thanks for answering that, Mom. Uh, let me go back to talking about it a little bit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you uh, What do you say about their temperament? See, as far as the temperaments are concerned, they're basically almost the same temperament. They are friendly. They're very intelligent. They're very loyal. Both breeds are very, very loyal. Uh, they are lovable. They're friendly. They're very sweet natured. Um, anyone who's uh, you know anyone who, who who's never kept a dog before and this is their first time yeah. wanting to keep a dog. I do suggest to them that they keep a Labrador. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, the little bit of difference in their temperament since you brought it up, I would like to say that a Labrador is a all out, highly active. He loves to play. He is, you know, he loves, they love water. They love outdoor activities. So if you are an active person, if you have children at home, uh, even if the children are boisterous, yeah. uh, yes, the the Labrador is a very, uh, very adaptable, friendly uh, dog in yeah. his nature, in his attitude. Uh, they love to go outside. So, and or if you're an outdoor sporting person, Labrador is. Always there. I mean, never tired. They're always with you by your side. You, you can't go from one room to the other, and that Labrador is sitting right next to you. He's very attentive. He's very. Uh, he's. You know, he protects you. He protects you, and he looks after you. And he's your uh, companion dog, which goes for the same for a golden retriever. The only um, since I've kept both. Since I've kept both. Um, I, I would like to just, I mean, um, see goldens are also very gentle. They're very obedient. They're very high, highly trainable. Their temperaments are beautiful. I just feel that they are slightly, they slightly, um, uh, uh, they like their calm. They like a calm home. They like, yeah. Um, with children, I'm talking about with children, they like the little bit of rest. So I would always say that if you're a young couple, I mean, if you're a couple and you don't have children, go ahead, get your golden retriever. If you're a retired uh, couple or a person and you want a dog, get a golden retriever. If you have a child in the home, you know, two year, uh, a baby to about, um, 10 years old, they tend to get slightly, you know, they pull ears, the the children can pull the lab, uh, the pup dog's ears, the tail, and you know, then I would always, that's the difference, the only difference I feel. That's why I say then you uh, get a Labrador. That is my, my take on that. So when I was about two years old, my uh, family had a uh, Labrador named Elsa, and she was my nanny because my parents used to send uh, me to the market with her. She would bring me back. She would steal vegetables and share with me. So we had a whole day going for a very very smart dog. And you know, I mean, I would, uh, she wouldn't let me run like down the hill. They are nanny dogs. They are nanny dogs. Where a golden is not. Right. Labrador is. And by the way, uh, Musara, this is the first time I heard Elsa, but I had a golden retriever when I was six years old, and her name was Elsa. <laughs> and what about their health? Like, what kind of health issues are, uh, would you say? Okay. Right. So now, uh, coming to the health issues, everyone should know. Okay, difference between a lab. Okay, labs are um, highly prone to hip dysplasia elbow dysplasia. Uh, they are prone to eye disease and they are also prone to um, obesity, which we have to be very, very careful about. In fact, um, I was reading also recently that they have found a special gene which leads to this obesity in labs. So it's not much easier. In, in labs? No, it's not their fault. <laughs> In, in labs as well as another breed, it'll come to me while I'm talking to you. Yeah. 
uh, I, I would like to say adaption, but maybe I, I might not be correct on that. Okay, so don't, I won't quote myself. Okay, now a golden retriever is also prone to hip and elbow dysplasia. It's okay. also prone to eye disease, but we do have two more uh, uh, problems with golden retrievers. And that is that they're prone to heart disease, okay. more so than Labradors. Okay. They are also prone to uh, um, uh, uh, cancer. And it's come out that almost 60% of golden retrievers form some sort of cancer in wow. their, in their, yes, yes. So this, these are, you know, late, uh, latest develop, uh, you know, health, um, uh, yeah. uh, 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 what I've, I've been reading about. So yes, the, the golden retriever is prone to a few more problems than the Labrador. Also, I read that the golden retriever is also prone to um, seizures more than the Labrador. So these are things to consider when you're talking about a Labrador and a golden retriever. Golden retriever is very prone to cancer and to heart disease. And guys, these are, you know, big commitments when you're getting a dog. Uh, you should yeah. be ready for a 10 to 15 year commitment at the the, at the least some dogs like i just saw on instagram the other day one uh, golden retriever she celebrated her 20th birthday which is wow wow yeah. and so yeah you know, and one golden retriever was 30 years old i was reading on the net one day yeah 30 years old yeah <laughs> so minty had some very good points um, i think we should talk about it since these yeah. two are very popular breeds so she's saying shelters are full of abandoned uh, Labradors. Most of them abandoned due to illness, hip dysplasia, paralysis, being majorly the cause. How can that be avoided? Secondly, I rescued two Goldens in the past two, three years who are very, very aggressive. No major history of abuse. In a country where unethical and irresponsible is on a high, what will be your message to people who are considering abuse? Okay, Minty, it's like this, that all over the world, the number one most popular dog in the world is a Labrador. Yeah. That is That remains the same for India. I mean, we're talking about India right now, I guess, Minty. And uh, the number two dog in the world is uh, right now is a golden retriever. Now they go oscillate between a golden retriever and a German Shepherd. In India, in India, it is not the a golden retriever. It come, it, you have the German Shepherd as a second, and third comes in as a beagle. Now, what is happening is that, um, for some reasons, it's the most popular dog. Your your Labrador and your golden retriever is a very popular dog, and um, uh, so they get abandoned the first. Um, slightest of problems this is what i'd like it's it is basically a 15 year 10 to 12 is what the life lifespan is but i'd like i love to say 15 years you know that's right. yeah so that's the that's this lifespan now yeah. it's basically what happens is it there are they are so popular there are breeders all over they are back back backdoor breeders there are you know um uh unethical breeders um they they're not they don't check there is a uh, high 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 uh, do, uh hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia now what happens is the moment uh the dog sh starts showing signs of this yeah the owner goes and just abandons the dog because he doesn't want to be stuck with a dog which has a problem. Uh, uh, yes, dogs are here for our pleasure, but then we also have to have that commitment of yes. taking care of that dog for its lifetime. It's very disheartening. Uh, there is uh, in, in Gurgaon, in Delhi, uh, where I live, there is friendly course. They have over 800 abandoned dogs. And the majority of them is a, a Labrador and a Golden Retriever. The next, the next reason is people love to get this cute little yellow black 
puppy and they're very cute as puppies because they're all roly poly and they come into the house golden uh, labradors like to chew and they'll yeah. start they start chewing things now immediately because of um uh, i guess um we do, uh, the uh, there is no there's lack of education uh, parents and the children feel that the dog is biting the child and he's not biting he's just teething and the moment that happens they start putting that dog outside there's also another problem in this country is that we find we want a dog to chain him and keep him on the in the in the guard house now as soon as we start chaining a dog, any dog, it could be any breed, it could be a Labrador, it could be a Golden Retriever, and we chain him to a tree or a post, so he is going to start getting uh, bad tempered. So what happens is when, when the guard leaves or when they can't handle it, they go and they take this dog and they put it in the shelter. So the dog has become bad tempered, aggressive. So if you're saying, Minty, that there is no history of uh, ab abuse, probably that dog has been tied or been locked up in a room and not given the proper exercise. I don't believe that there cannot be any uh, uh, history of abuse. Just uh, not giving your dog enough um, exercise is going to create that aggressiveness. As I told you, uh, uh, a bored dog is an unhappy dog. When he's unhappy, he's going to destroy. When he's going to destroy, you're going to yell at him. You're going to hit him. When you hit him, he becomes bad tempered. So you you have to understand that there you might, might there might not be actual abuse that you can see, but yeah. dogs are not meant to be brought home and chained up or kept in one room. They have to be exercised. They have to be kept as your family. Uh, as your companion, as you keep your family. Now, if you're not willing to do that, I suggest you go and get a goldfish or a, a, a or you know a, a fish. But please do not keep a cat or a dog if you have no commitment. And they are not they're not toys, and they are, they should not be uh, uh, they are, you know used as a present or a toy or just something to give to a child to play with when the dog gets too big he gets he starts eating too much um they can't handle him they don't take him for walks then they just go and dump him a lot of people shift home they don't want to take the dog they go dump him um the dog barks they go dump him there are a lot of reasons minty that the dogs are put into um you know into uh shelters yeah yeah you know uh because i also like uh and i get a lot of calls also people asking for dogs and the first thing i tell them is just because you can buy a dog it's not a thing it requires care it requires patience it requires time you know you have to make that effort for the dog to get back to you so they, like, i think they're the best thing uh, on the planet I, it requires work everything requires work it's not a thing to buy it to make a house yeah 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 absolutely so if you don't want to give that commitment it's not a play thing it's not a toy for your children it is yeah. a companion if you want to treat a dog uh, uh get a companion for you for the next 15 years go get a dog treat him like your family member if you want to tie him if you want to get a watchdog and you want to tie him outside don't get a don't get a dog don't get a dog get a guard pay the guard money and let the guard be a, a watch person not not a dog yeah. so zoheb wants to know you've had labs goldens english cockers and pointers which yes. breed to you was the easiest to eat breed and or show uh, for me all the dogs are uh, easy because i love them and they're all easy to breed because we do a lot of homework. We don't do any wrong breeding. And I used to only breed Zoheb. Hi, Zoheb. How are you? I only used to breed when I wanted a good dog for myself. Uh, we used to breed. We want, uh, we, you know, breed. We, we would breed once in five years. Uh, show, they're all good dogs to show. Cocker Spaniel has a little bit extra work to do because you have to do a lot of grooming for that Cocker Spaniel. 
Yeah, and Cherian is here, and I think he works for that. Hi, Cherian. <laughs> Hi, Cherian. Yes, Cher. You you spend every single day, you know, grooming your dog to take him into a dog show. So as far as the shows are concerned, uh, yeah, um, um, I, I, all the dogs, all they're they're beautiful because. Well, they're all for what you've mentioned, Zohib, are very sporty dogs. They're very sporty. They move beautifully and they look lovely in the ring. So, yeah, I'm partial towards the gun dogs. <laughs> okay. Uh, Vipul, you have a question about fungal issue. Again, please consult your vet. Uh, we, do not have, we don't have a vet on session today. Uh, she uh, She's in talk show judge. She has a lot of experience about dogs if you want to learn about the topics we are talking about short. But for any health issues, please consult your regular pet. Uh, Omi Andi has a question for you. She says, till what age from a puppy stage that you think is a golden easy to train? In, uh, till what age from puppy stage do you think? Uh, I mean, uh, goldens you can train till they lifelong i mean uh, they they will learn a new trick every day of their life i you can train a, a puppy of two months old you can train a, a dog of two years old you can train a dog of 10 years old to learn new tricks yeah golden retrievers and labradors are trainable i think all dogs are trainable till till the end you can every day you can train him a new uh, train a new trick or a new, uh, uh, if that's what you're asking, Ami, I don't know what uh, exactly if that's what you're asking. But yes, golden retrievers, Labradors, very, very, very easy to train. That is why they are very obedient. They always want to please you. So they're looking at you. They, they are, they've been bred to have eye contact, basically. They're always looking and reading your face. They can. They don't need words. They can. They can read your face and understand exactly what you're feeling and what you're going to say to them next. And some of them can anticipate what is the next. What your next move is going to be. That's how intelligent they are, and they are very trainable all their entire life. Rahul, I know why you are asking this question, but I put it up. He's saying, ma'am, which one is your favorite breed in Labrador and Golden Retriever? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Rahul. I, you would know. You would know. So, <laughs> so I'll wait till the end, Rahul. <laughs> you, I don't, you, put it, you put it what your favorite breed is, Rahul. We know his favorite breed. He got a tattoo also. So yeah, and yes, Francis, their tail is always wagging, always because they're always happy dogs, always happy dog. And I know what Dad wants. He's saying Labrador. It is one in each color. If not two in each color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad wants uh, one. In, he wants uh, uh, yellow or chocolate, and I have my black. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Ashish wants to know how to avoid Labrador being obese in adult age, diet change if any. Yeah, I can't help you with the diet change, Ashish, but uh, that would you need to go to a nutritionist. But yes, very okay. Now, how do you know your dog is a beast? You have it's a very it's a very simple way. You look at the dog from the top. You look down at your dog and you feel the dog from his neck onwards. Very gently feel your Labrador. And if you feel his ribs, he's fine. Uh, you don't have to hold him tight to feel the ribs. Just rub your, and he should have a waist. Like we all love our waist, which we don't have. I don't have anymore. But from the top, if you look at a Labrador, he should have a waistline, which is slightly going in. And his ribs, his chest, his ribs, you should be able to feel it when you're just gently uh, touching it. You shouldn't be able to see it from your eye, but when you uh, uh, touch it, you should be able to feel your Labrador uh, ribs. So then he's fine. Now, if you're not being able to see the ribs and you can't even uh, touch it and feel the ribs, he's, the Labrador is a beast, then I would suggest a food change, a diet change, um, exercise. It depends on your the health of your dog, uh, older dog, um, you know, Basically, uh, you can put on a lot of years on your dog, at least two to three years if you reduce the weight. So 
uh, I would suggest you talk to a vet for uh, you know or a um, nutritionist for that. Yes, Diesel given her has given her vote for golden retriever. Uh, <laughs> I think Bella Bella will continue to have a home, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let me see if we have. Uh, what, let's talk a little quickly about uh, the training of uh, these dogs, you know, because uh, you spoke about how people don't put in the time, and you also said both are very trainable. So, uh, any other points? Absolutely. Uh, you start training from the day the dog is born, the puppy is born. There is, I mean, you give it 10, 15 days, the eyes are open, and the training starts for them. Uh, okay. first, thing you, first thing you train is uh, 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 housebreaking, which probably if you keep him with the mother, uh, the dog with the uh, the puppy with the mother long enough, the mother itself teaches the uh, uh, puppy to be housebroken. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, uh, because the mother will always clean up where the puppy is sleeping. So the puppy never dirties where he's sleeping. He'll always get up and he'll run to one corner. And that's the time where you have to get up immediately. So the first two, three weeks when you get a puppy home is devoted to uh, toilet training and housebreaking that dog. And I promise you, they will learn within a week. They will learn. The idea is to pick up the dog Im puppy immediately. The moment he uh, wakes up, take him outside or put him on a newspaper or take him to a spot where you have designated he has to uh, 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 um, uh, do his pee and that's where he's going to do it. Within two, three, four days, he's only going to do it there. Now, uh, if you're in an apartment, you get an area, whatever it is, that's up to you. Or if you have a garden, you take him straight out to the garden and he's going to do that. So that's how you start training. The next step is to train the dog for no and sit, uh, no, uh, you know, be calm, no jumping around. I don't believe the dog should be jumping around when he meets people or strangers or the doorbell rings. This is all situational. If you want a companion for your home, uh, you have to uh, teach your dog how to walk on a leash, not to lunge at other dogs. That, that training starts at three months, not to lunge at other dogs when, you know, it's all right, wag the tail, play with the puppy, play with the other dog. So there is a training continuously. There will be training. It has to be done very gently, very softly, no scaring your do dog. But um, also you must teach your dog that he has to sit and wait when the food is uh, given. Uh, he doesn't have to just get into the bowl and uh, eat, you know, just then you need to also groom your dog. So he, that's your touch. That's your time where you're, you know, bonding with your dog. And basically all the manners of the house, the dog has to learn manners. Like you have manners, the dog has to learn manners. He's barking at other dogs. He's barking at people. That's not manners. A golden retriever is not used for guard dog. It's not a Labrador. It's not a guard dog. These are home companion dogs. Yeah, no, because uh, training also creates that space and time for you to bond with your dog. So it's very important, guys. You know, dog food has a lot of resources uh, to help you with the same. Also, YouTube information is so easily accessible now that uh, dog training has advanced so much in the last few decades. So please, you know, use updated methods, the scaring of the dogs and all that, and all updated ways of training. Always treat. Always yeah. treat. Positive training is the way to go. So please, uh, Rana says, tell us about Mati. Mati uh, is my yellow lab who rescue. I rescued him in Mumbai. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Mumbai, um, there is a big puppy mill market and other exotic pets also can be found in Crawford. So we got him from there for a, a very low price. Uh, and then I found out I used to foster a lot of dogs at that time. Uh, you know, they'll be adjusted for adoption. And somebody called me and said there was this dog. He's in a very bad shape. Uh, I mean, he had a lot of issues. He could not even stand. He didn't have any muscles because he was kept tied or locked in the room. So I got him, and I had to get a trainer because this dog was in a shell at the time I got him, and I didn't think I was capable of helping him out. And now he's a very happy dog, happily adjusted in the house, always, uh, always hungry, but that's, that's the same. 
so matli i mean of course you know again uh, uh, adoption is is a good thing for you because get an adult dog sometimes they already toilet trained they already know all the basic commands you bring the dog in they learn very quickly what you like in the house and there you go you're all set so i'm a big uh, supporter of adoption guys and who else is here uh, okay mom somebody wants to know abhiji is saying any comments on having rottweiler as the first dog in a family of three uh abhijit i would not recommend that at all a uh, family of three adults sorry i'm i, I thought three children um yes abhijit it depends a rottweiler is a uh, it's a it's a working dog it's a very strong willed dog um you have to be very strong will you have to be an alpha person you have to train that dog right from the beginning no i don't re uh, recommend having a rottweiler as the first dog in the family of three adults i don't i would always say that you uh, because it is a very strong will dog beautiful dog rottweilers are beautiful companions as well but not like labradors and golden retrievers you have to be very strong willed you have to uh, be you have to be the alpha and you can uh, and the um um they're not forgiving dogs you know uh, um as far as uh, uh, they are concerned at rottweilers so i don't recommend i don't recommend a first dog as a rottweiler udhav we answered your question in the comments please check out that video recording we give you tips or you can contact us for some trainers in your areas alok nanda is here hi he saying studies to show that um, chocolate labs live shorter uh, lives than yellow and black and more prone prone to ailments uh, is it true uh i'm not sure uh, look that i've heard that maybe maybe we can have this discussion maybe i need to do some more research no i don't uh i don't think so uh and i don't think they're more prone to ailments i just think that they're prone to the same amount of ailments that the yellow and uh, the yellow and the black are but maybe i can be wrong i i don't i'm not i can't answer that i wouldn't know i wouldn't know look sorry Hey, uh, Anand Vishwanath is here. Hi, Anand. Uh, would you recommend any specific mental engagement exercises for lads and boys? Oh, uh, mental engagement exercise is very good. Just keep talking to your dog. He'll keep trying to figure out what you're trying to say to him. Yes, he does. He wants to know exactly what. You, point to objects. Tell them. Uh, show them. Uh, put a name to objects. You know, say slipper. Say leash. my dog knows a lot of a uh, lot of words now because he because i keep talking to him when i go for walks with him i talk i show him a cat i show him a bird i show him a crow i show him and he knows now where to look if i say if i say peacock he look on on, on top of a, a building if i say cat he look under the car he he knows pigeon he knows crow he knows all of these words it's very good it's very good mental uh, exercise for the dog and of course there's a lot of other exercises which have come out you'll have to talk to a proper trainer i'm a little old fashioned in this i like to just teach my dog get his leash he gets my uh, my shoes i tell him shoes he knows his toy he knows his toy for walking he knows his toy for playing at home he knows there are certain things he can take out of the house he knows that when i open the door he does he only goes to the top of the steps he will not take one step down until i don't come next to him i've taught him how to bring the newspaper upstairs you know from the ground floor uh, without tearing it he brings it he gives it to us so all of these are very great everyday activities which you can include uh you know this is just a communication which you're going to have with your pet and he gets included in everything and that's very good mental stimul stimulation teach him teach him all sorts of things labradors golden retrievers they can even fetch your phone for you they can fetch they know they understand you just two days and they will understand what slipper what uh, now my dog when he wants to go out for a walk he'll either bring his walking toy or he'll bring one of my shoes and put it next to me that let's go for a walk so all of these are you know uh, very good mental stimulation 
So, uh, Divya, I think this answer should also apply to you because she's saying my golden retriever puppy is very active in talking. It outsmarts us daily and finds uh, something to fight or new place where it should not be. Even after exhausting it by running or walking very hard, we are very subjective. Well, you know what? Puppies are very active. Uh, uh, naughty is only how much you let them get. You know, uh, they kind of. Uh, 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 they, they love it. They, they're mischievous. They're naughty. They're very active. Now, as I told you, these dogs have been bred for very, uh, you know, uh, uh, skilled hunting reason. So they have to be uh, very active. And uh, so they're always getting into trouble if they don't have, you know, as you say, they are, you know, uh, you're exercising, but they're all, they are very, very active dogs. They're very active dogs. So, uh, so we've been on for over an hour. So thank you for your time. But again, what is your personal preference? Who does your <laughs> Okay. So now what I would suggest who's everyone, how to get a personal preference also is to spend time. You all, everyone would know someone who has a Labrador, someone who has a golden retriever. So before I go to find out, to go and spend time with a Labrador or a golden retriever, spend some time, take them for a walk. Uh, uh, you know, go to someone's home who has that. Um, uh, as far as uh, I feel that if you want someone very, something very energetic, something, uh, someone very act, a dog which is very active and outdoor, go for a Labrador. If you want someone who's a dog which is loving, kind, gentle, and slightly calmer, is a golden retriever. Um, my preference at the end of this show, I would love to say, is a golden retriever. <laughs> Uh, that was part of the reason, uh, guys, if you don't know, I married Karan. Mom had a litter of 11 golden puppies in the house when I met him. And I said, this is the best house on the planet. I'm never leaving this house. And I'm <laughs> so, after almost seven years. <laughs> my, uh, my heart melts when I see a golden retriever. Yeah, one of those. One of the, Hi, Manmeet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you. I'm going to close this session now. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. I've learned a lot from her in the last seven years. So that's why a lot of my lines are the same as her. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Mom, for your time today. Thanks, Ms. Sarah. And thank you, Dogs. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.